Today, I'm going to show you one of the tricks that I've used in investing in crypto, which has made the biggest change to my portfolio. It's a very, very, very small thing that you have to do. You probably won't even feel it when you're doing it, but ultimately, it's going to make the biggest difference in your crypto portfolio. And as I say, there has been no better trick that I've used to give me crypto gains than the one that I'm going to show you today. Then after that, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about the US's attack on crypto because now what they've done is they've attacked crypto once again as you can see they went for kraken and binance on the same day in an attack on crypto and they went for altcoins using kraken and the reality is that even though they did this we didn't move the market or what they did didn't move the market at all in fact i think bitcoin was at 37000 when they did it and bitcoin is now 36921 and bnb which is kind of where the attack was is actually up on the day of yesterday. So I'm gonna show you why that is the case and, and whether the market's reading this incorrectly. And then what we're gonna to do today is we're going to make changes to our portfolio because the market has changed. We need to be nimble. We need to change with the market. And so today we're gonna to make some changes to our portfolio. And let me warn you about these changes. These changes are pretty degen. So um, if you're not a DJ and you probably want to stick to the old portfolio, if you are a DJ and you maybe want to take more risk to make more money, then the new portfolio is probably a much, much, much better fit for you. And then I want to show you a new ETH layer two. Uh, it's called Blast. It is quite a cool innovation. Uh, and a lot of people are putting money into this innovation. And the question is, is this a real innovation or is this just another passing fad like, for example, Frantic? So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's a massive, massive, massive show. I'm sure you guys are going to love this profit strategy. This thing that I'm going to show you today is going to be like taking profits without actually taking profits. That's that. Just remember that, like taking profits without taking profits. So let's go, guys. We've got a big show. We've got a lot to do today. <coughs> I see all the friends here in, in the chat. I see all the friends here in the chat. Someone says, is this financial advice? Yes, what I'm showing you today is going to be financial advice. If you're smart enough to take the financial advice. I see Iris Morris is here. She's saying present. Angel is here saying present. Insightful inhabitants. Kenneth, all of you guys. Uh, I see you guys in the chat. We've got, a, we've got a big weight on our shoulders. And I'll tell you why we've got a big weight on our shoulders. In the last two days, you guys have told me that I've done my two best shows that I've ever done. So let's just quickly go to YouTube. You'll see that we've had more views in the last two days on my shows than we've had, I think, the whole year. I think this is, we actually had, yeah, let's quickly just go to Crypto Banter's YouTube page. And let's quickly go to that view so that you guys can see it. Um, you can see that the last two days, I've got one show that did, um, here we go, one show that did 107,000 views, another one that did 85,000 and still growing. So there's a lot of pressure on me today to bring you another high alpha per minute show. And that's exactly what I intend to do today. What I need from you is very simple. You need to subscribe to our channel. We are now the fastest growing channel out there. We have a few channels in our sites. If you know who they are, just type them in, in, the, in the chat. Let me know who you think we're chasing in terms of subscribers. We are on a mission to become the biggest and most credible streaming channel in the world. And that's what we're going to be doing. If you are here and you're already part of the fam and you just want to give us love, today I need the energy. And I'll tell you why I need the energy. Today I'm not feeling great. My energy's down, my throat's sore. You can see I, I never, ever, ever drink Coke, but here I am drinking Coke. So what I need from you guys um, so that I can bring you the alpha is just smash the like button. The more you smash the like button, the more energy I get. The more energy I get, the more alpha comes out of my mouth. That's the, the relationship that we have together. And on a day like today where I'm feeling so flat, I'm feeling flatter than this Coke. Um, mm, this, is the, this is a different Coke from the one BitBoy drinks. It's different. This is um, another one. So, um, so, um, no, this is a South African Coke. He drinks the American one. This is the South African Coca-Cola. It's, it's, it's similar, but it's different. Anyway, let's get into the alpha. <laughs> I can see I'm going to be in such big trouble with Fred. Anyway, let's get into um, the alpha for the show today. I did promise you that we are going to show you this one change in your strategy. It's just a small change that you have to make. And when you make this change, it's going to change your long-term portfolio forever. And not many people know this. In fact, probably only 1% of investors apply the strategy. And when they do, they land up making a lot of money. So you'd need to decide whether you want to make this and you want to be the 1% of investors that actually become uh, a millionaires. All right, let's go into the news of today. And I guess 
Um, the first bit of news for today before we get into the alpha of the show is um, this US attack on crypto. So what they're doing now is they they are trying to attack Bitcoin and crypto, but the reality is that the attacks aren't landing. So they're firing these rockets at crypto, but the rockets aren't having any effect on the crypto market. And so they and they're running out of of weapons. So what happened in the last 48 hours, they obviously went for for CZ Binance. They also went for altcoins. And instead of going for altcoins themselves, they went for altcoins by actually attacking Kraken. And we're going to talk about the attack on Kraken. And in this attack, they went after ADA, Axie Infinity, Algorand, Atom, uh, Chili's, Coty, Dash, Filecoin, Flow. They went for all these tokens. They went for all these tokens in an attack, but they went via Kraken, which is like a small rocket because the first time they went via Coinbase, that was like a big rocket. And now they're realizing they don't have any more ammo in their arsenal. So what they're doing is they're now attacking Kraken. And what's happened is they managed to move the altcoin market a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Probably a little healthy pullback in the altcoin market, but zero effect on Bitcoin. Like literally zero effect on Bitcoin. That's that's pretty much the picture on Bitcoin. When before they, they mounted these attacks, Bitcoin was at 37,000. Here we are today at 36,943. Congratulations to SEC. You managed to do $57 worth of damage to, to Bitcoin uh, with your attack. The one good thing that they've done is, well, you can call it a good thing, is that they reduced the RSIs. So the RSIs is the stochastic indicator. It is a indicator of momentum. It is an indicator of sentiment. And what you can see is that the tokens, the majority of altcoins yesterday were on the overbought territory. They were all in overbought territory. What this attack by the SEC has managed to do is bring us from overbought back to neutral. Now, that's not a good enough move because we want to be entering the market when we are weak and oversold. That's when the market actually goes up. And you can see that on the four hour, we are in middle territory. If you go to the 24 hour, most coins are still relatively overbought. And if you go to the one week, the SEC basically did no damage at all. All the coins are basically in completely, completely, completely overbought territory. So we're not ready to buy the dip yet. We're not ready to buy the dip yet. Hold on, let me just switch off this, uh, these alerts that I'm getting in my ear. I'm sure you guys are also hearing them. Let me quickly close them. There we go. So um, we're not ready to buy this. We're not ready to, to, to be buying this dip yet, but we have made some major, major, major changes in, in, my, in our portfolio. The other thing which I'm watching is I'm watching the Bitcoin dominance. So this is the, the Bitcoin dominance chart. Let me just move this so that you, we can see it a bit better. That's the Bitcoin dominance chart. You can see that yesterday, Bitcoin, because Bitcoin stayed flat and the altcoins went slightly back, what you can see that this dominance chart continues in this upward trend. So remember what we want is we want this dominance chart to do something like this and then to break down here. And that's when we're going to get our big old season, when, the, when, we get that, when we get this big breakdown over here. And it's going to come because it comes every, uh, in, in every um, cycle. Right now, what's happening in the market is you've got the SEC on the one side trying to shoot these measly little rockets that don't actually, are not actually doing any damage. And on the other side, you have this lure, this pool of the ETF. And the ETF is now a maximum of 50 days away. So there are 50 days between now and the 10th of January. And the ETF is now a maximum of 50 days away if it gets approved. And it kind of feels inevitable that the ETF is going to get approved. Why do I say that it feels inevitable? Well, the latest correspondence of what we're getting is we're seeing that the, the, the um, applicants are starting to, to file amendments as per what the SEC is asking them to file. And in this case, what is that clicking noise? Oh, um, in this case, the, the, um, the, the, they're talking about fees. So in here, they're talking about like the ARK Invest fees will charge 0 .8, 0 .8 uh, 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 BIPs or uh, 80 BIPs, which is 0.8%. Then you've got all the other ETFs. And now they're starting to, to file their pricing. Now, when they're starting to file the pricing, it would be very strange if the SEC said, look, refine your pricing. Tell us who your custodian is. File this amendment. File that amendment. Oh, by the way, your, your ETF is actually being declined. So it's, it's starting to feel almost inevitable that we have 50 days to make some huge changes to our portfolio before the ETF gets approved. And rest assured, rest assured that the, um, when the ETF actually does get approved, we're going to get a, a massive, massive, massive pump. So the question is what happens after that pump? So by the way, 
what I would do is I would look here and I would look at the winner Bitcoin competition. We're running this winner Bitcoin competition. Um, how, you, how you can win a Bitcoin is you need to predict the price of Bitcoin on the first of the first 001 on Coinbase in on Eastern time. And if you are the closest, then you win a full Bitcoin. Now, if the ETF is approved, this Bitcoin could be worth 50 or $60,000. So you want to get in there. How do you do it? Sign up with any banter account. If you don't have a banter account, there's a link below. Otherwise, just go here and take out any of these accounts and get any of the referral bonuses and make your prediction. Now, here's how I would make the prediction. I see people are predicting 57,575. This is actually very smart. So here's the predictions. The majority of people are still predicting between 42 and 42 and a half thousand. I believe that these people are wrong because we're going to get a huge move in Bitcoin, either up or down. Either we're going to get the ETF approved or the run-up for the ETF being approved, in which case Bitcoin goes up to 50 or 60,000, or we get the ETF declined or people worrying about it being declined, and then we go down to 20, 25,000. So when you're making predictions, because you get five predictions, be smart about how you make your five, your five entries. Put one in at like 60,000, 55,000 in case we get the ETF approval. Put one in at 20, 25,000 in case we don't get the ETF approval. And the others spread in between, um, somewhere in between. And that maximizes your chance to, to win a Bitcoin. Now, there's going to be very few opportunities for you to really, really, really win a full Bitcoin. N not many people are crazy enough to actually bring a foot, to, fo to, to give you an opportunity to win a full Bitcoin, but do it. Do it. This is the best chance that, that you actually have. And as I say, right now, what you have is you have this lure of the ETF versus the, the tax that the SEC is, is mounting on crypto. Let's quickly talk a little bit about the attacks that are being mounted, in, uh, mounted on crypto. And let's just talk about how big of a deal these attacks actually are. So the first attack is that we have been speculating for a while whether the Department of Justice actually has anything on CZ and whether CZ is going to get criminally charged. That's We've been talking about it for a while. Now, what we know for sure is we know for sure that Binance did illegal, possibly unethical things in the old days when they were a small business. I remember that we used to trade altcoins on Binance without ever doing KYC. Now, that's effectively money laundering. If you can put money onto an exchange and and you can take money off the exchange without doing KYC, well, you know, the SEC can actually link you back or the DOJ can actually link you back for money laundering. So we know that they did this. They probably weren't malicious in what they did, but in the old days when crypto was a real free-for-all, I don't know how many um, exchanges had all their ducks in a row. Anyway, this is an article that broke from Bloomberg. And in this article, what they're saying is that the US Justice Department is seeking more than $4 billion to, to end the case against Binance and to basically let the exchange continue running. And what they say very importantly in the, the, the article is that they're saying negotiations between the Justice Department and Binance include the possibility that its founder, Chao Peng Zha, would face criminal charges in the US under an agreement to resolve the probe into alleged money laundering. So this doesn't absolve, if this is right, it doesn't absolve uh, CZ, but it does allow the Binance exchange to continue operating. What's interesting to me is how, the, you know, when you're talking about the Department of Justice, the Department of Justice is the law. These are people that enforce the criminal part of the law. And if a Department of Justice is after you or wants to sue you, what that means is that you have broken the law with a criminal offense, criminal, not civil, criminal offense. And if you have broken the law with a criminal offense, what do you pay $4 billion to then get completely absolved of, of what you did? That sounds more like a mafia than a government. Like governments aren't supposed to do it unless governments are, of course, mafias. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing that the government is the biggest mafia of them all. What they're saying is, look, we know that CZ is, is, is in Dubai. There's no extradition agreement between Dubai and the US. So... Maybe we should just try and squeeze this guy, squeeze him for $4 billion. Maybe we'll get $4 billion and we move on. I, I did see a tweet here from um, John Reed Stark. And I think John Reed Stark, if I'm not mistaken, used to work at the SEC. He was a chief SEC internet enforcement officer. And what he's saying here is that this agreement that Binance is entering into, which is called the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, effectively means a few things. It means that it's a mechanism by which the U.S. targets criminal investigation with, with court approval, and they can av avoid criminal charges in exchange for their commitment to abide by the dictates of the DPA. In other words, if you do what we tell you to do, 
If we do what we tell you to do, people are phoning me in the middle of a show. That's very rude. Let me just uh, close it. So if 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 Binance does what they are um, what they are supposed to be doing, then we will not charge Binance further than the four billion dollars that we have. But if Binance then make a wrong move, then we can reinstitute the charges. Now, when do they actually do this as opposed to going to court? One is, of course, when they want money. Um, and remember, governments are actually a business. The second thing is, it says, when the Department of Justice is concerned that the criminal prosecution of a corporation could cause a collapse to the corporate defendant and trigger a litany of unintended consequences to the global financial marketplace and innocent third parties like Binance customers. So what the Department of Justice is saying, if this article is true, is they're saying, look, we know that if we do something bad to Binance, then we could cause what they have called a litany of unintended consequences to the global financial marketplace, which is a $1 trillion industry, which is it's a big industry, and to innocent third parties. And so what they're saying is rather let's just pay the fine and, and actually move on. So that's the attack. Um, we did see, and I don't know if this is related or unrelated, but we did see $4 billion actually move out of Binance into, um, Binance has 3.9 billion in USDT on the move. They're moving it around on the blockchain. So I wonder if they actually are settling this, uh, this, this um, transaction. A lot of people are asking, does Binance actually have $4 billion if they had to pay $4 billion? Now, the qu first part of that question is, do they have to pay $4 billion? Probably this is just a negotiation. So the Department of Justice says $4 billion, Binance come back and say, we're happy to pay 400 million. They meet somewhere at a billion. CZ writes them a check of a billion or transfers them a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. And then it's game over and everybody carries on operating um, the way that they want to operate. So I don't believe that this settles for $4 billion, number one. Number two, in the unlikely event that there was a $4 billion penalty, could Binance actually afford to pay $4 billion? The answer is unequivocally, yes. Why? Because not only have they made that amount of money, and I'll give you just some examples of the amount of money that Binance has made. So they made $12 billion in revenue in 2020, 2022. 2021, they made a huge amount of money. I wonder if I've actually got some stats for you. I don't have the stats, but let's just say that they've got huge money, right? Um, these, guys, these guys have made huge money. Also, they've built a business which is worth billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. So if they just take that business, sell a little bit of equity, and then move on, and carry on. So what do we know for sure is that this is potentially coming to an end. And as this comes to an end, you could say that one of the big clouds that's been hanging over crypto from the last bull market is no longer a cloud hanging over crypto. It's now starting to be more like, all right, it's gone. And um, as I read this tweet by Will Clemente, it's a very smart guy, he's a young guy, but a very smart guy he says, Binance was the biggest in the idiosyncratic overhang on this market for the last year. Looks like we may financially be, we may finally be getting some resolution on it. The markets hate uncertainty. They love clarity and resolution. Similar vibe to the BitMEX resolution in 2020. And so that's exactly what it's like. It's like, we just want resolution. We want this thing to go away, which is actually why the BNB token actually shut up. And yesterday, the BNB token actually hit $268. Just to be clear, even if they resolve this, I wouldn't be putting any money back into BNB. Why? Because I don't see the upside. There's such great tokens in this new ecos in this new bull run that I don't understand why I need to invest in Binance of all tokens. As I said, I love CZ, love the exchange, use the exchange all the time. Just think they're better investments than, than the BNB token. So that was the first attack. Second attack is an attack on altcoins. As I said, the first time they went via Coinbase where they listed all these things with secur as securities. The second time, what they've done is they've gone via Kraken. And in this attack, which is very cheeky, they went to Kraken and they sued Kraken with a very similar lawsuit that they, that they placed on Coinbase, where they said, look, you've been operating an illegal securities exchange, you've co-mingled customer funds. The, the irony is that about a year ago, they paid, 10 months ago, Kraken paid $30 million to the SEC and they were forced to shut down their staking operation. And so Jesse Powell says, look, the message is clear, 30 million buys you about 10 months before the SEC comes around to extort you again. Lawyers can do a lot with 30 million, but the SEC knows the real fight will cost 100 million. And so what they're doing is they're literally going after them for, for money. That's, that's exactly what's happening. But in this attack, what did they do? They called those same token securities. So Cardano, Axie, Axie Infinity, Algorand, Atom, 
uh, Sandbox. They didn't say XRP and they didn't say ETH because they know what, what's going on here. Now, let me tell you why I think that this is a strategic mistake by the SEC. Very simple. The SEC went for Coinbase first. The, the, war, the lawsuit against Coinbase is exactly the same as the lawsuit against Kraken. So inevitably, Coinbase is going to land up in court before Kraken. And when they do, they're going to resolve all the arguments. And then whatever happens in the Coinbase case, the lawyers for Kraken are just going to go to the court and say, look, well, this is what happened with Coinbase, same charges. Well, we want the same, the same result. And I think that strategically, who has better odds of winning? Coinbase. Coinbase is more powerful. They've been running a cleaner ship, et cetera, et cetera. So I think strategically the SEC made a mistake. Um, I think now the SEC have also right up Congress. You've got Sen Senator Cynthia Loomis, um, who's actually quite schizophrenic because she tells us she's very much pro-Bitcoin. But as soon as that chain analysis report came out the other day, um, which was wrong, by the way, she went and wrote this whole letter about how people, we shouldn't allow uh, crypto to fund Hamas. Now she's back on crypto side saying the SEC cannot continue ruling by enforcement. Crypto asset companies have repeatedly tried to get guidance from the SEC. So now she's coming back onto, onto our side to push her act, which is called the Loomis Gillibrand Responsible Financial Innovation Act, will reign in the SEC and allow financial innovation to thrive in the United States. So that is the two attacks that they are playing in crypto. And again, I think it's great that we got Binance out the way. I also think that it's great that we're going head to head with the exchanges in the United States because we need to get resolution. Coinbase is going to get the resolution first. Kraken is just going to hand over the, the, the document that Coinbase have and say, look, we want exactly the same treatment, please. In the meantime, they are also doing a lot of good things for, for crypto. So the reason why, why this is, they, we, we see this as a positive for crypto. Number one is you can see that now they don't have any new charges. So what they're doing is they're recycling the old charges, but actually using smaller exchanges. So we did Coinbase. Now we're going to go for Kraken with, with the same, with, with, smaller, with smaller moves. Okay, then they're leaving it in the court's hands to decide. So now the courts are going to eventually be forced to make a decision. And once the courts make a decision, that's it. You can't go back and say, well, you know, the court made a decision, but the SEC still wants to carry on. Exactly like the Ripple case. So they can carry on shouting and threatening and doing everything that they want to do until, until such time as the court says, stop. And then pff, that's it. The SEC basically loses its arms. And that's exactly what's happening. The third thing, which is really good about what's going on here, is that all these attacks on centralized exchanges are forcing people to start using the decentralized exchanges. And that's what we want. We want people in crypto to use the decentralized exchanges. And you can see this is the volume of, de of, of trade on decentralized exchanges versus centralized exchanges. And you can see that more and more over time, people are starting to use the, um, the decentralized exchanges. At one point, about 21.3% of all trade, 21.3% uh, was done um, was done on the decentralized exchanges relative to the centralized exchanges, which is which is quite big. And for us, what that does is it creates an investment opportunity because we know that people are going to move away from the centralized exchanges to the decentralized exchanges. We can amend our investment thesis accordingly. We've always said that we think DEX is our great investment. If you look at our uh, ETF that we made together, and you look at the tokens that we that we put in, we put in. Uniswap, we put in Curve, we put in Injective, we put in um, uh, DYDX, GMX, GNS, we put in a whole lot of exchanges and, the reason, and Stargate and ThoughtChain. And the reason why we put them all in, because we always said that DEXs are a very, very, very good investment narrative. And now we can see again that what the SEC is doing is pushing the agenda of DEXs. And so you can see that Uniswap, PancakeSwap, ThoughtChain, Trader Joe, Orca and Curve are all starting to pump um, uh, on this. In Solana, we know that Solana had $3 billion worth of DEX volume, the highest DEX volume that it's ever had in its life. And they continue above $3 billion in the past seven days. So you can see that over here, they continue to, to grow above uh, $3 billion, which is amazing. It actually shows that they are keeping the momentum. And you can see it has a list of a whole lot of DEXs that are gaining, that are gaining um, uh, uh, um, popularity or traction. So Uniswap, PancakeSwap, uh, ThoughtChain, Curve, Orca, Trader Joe, Radium on Solana, QuickSwap. You can see they are starting to, to pick up steam. Um, Jupiter, DEX aggregators, also starting to pick up steam. 
Another one that is picking up steam is one of our sponsors. So it is a, spo a sponsor of us, but it's a, it's a great DEX. It's called Smart DEX, Smart DEX. And what this does is it turns impermanent loss into what they call impermanent gain. Now, if you've ever provided liquidity on an exchange, on a DEX, you know that one of the worst things that can happen to you is you get hit with impermanent loss. What Smart DEX does is it, it turns impermanent loss into impermanent gain. Um, so go, go and check it out. Um, what you can see is that they do offer also quite high um, uh, uh, APYs, 47%, uh, 46%, uh, et cetera. But go, go and check it out because I do think that they've been our sponsor for a while. And also you can see their token has performed extremely well. Their token's up, I think, 200% this year. So I was looking at it the other day. It's up 200% this year. So that is um, the narrative. The other narrative here is... Um, Dex aggregators, so Jupiter, One Inch, um, uh, Kyberswap, all the Dex aggregators. These are the things that you should be looking at when the US start to attack the centralized exchanges and when they go for the centralized exchanges. So, based on all that's happened, and based on the shows that I've done in the last couple of days, I have made some big changes to the portfolio, to the ETF. So the reason why I've made changes to the ETF is one. I see that we need to be more DEX focused. We were DEX focused before, but we need to be more DEX focused. The second thing is, as you know, when I made the, the shows the other day, I said to you guys that there are a whole lot of um, uh, 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 narratives that I'm looking at. Cosmos, Solana, gaming. Um, we, we basically looked at all the narratives. Yesterday, we added AI to, to those narratives. So based on that, I redid our portfolio to make it a little bit more degen. So I'm going to show you the changes that I made to the portfolio. And then I'm going to show you, again, you must only do make these changes if you feel more degen. And then I'm going to show you one trick, which if you apply this trick to this bull market, you will land up making more money than everybody else. So just before we get there, I do see people are saying that the Bitcoin price is going down. Um, hold on to your horses. Okay, so I see the price is now 36,600. It's not the end of the world. Everyone whew, calm down, take a, take a deep breath. We've gone, I just, I just want to remind you that we have gone in the last month from, we've had 36% increase in the price of Bitcoin in the last month. So if we get a slight pullback and we get the RSIs resetting slightly, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. So it's not, it, it's not, it's not the end of the world. We actually want that so we can actually continue to go up. And we're not going to go up if we just carry on going up and up and up. Let's see what this has done to the four-hour RSIs. So it's starting to bring the four-hour RSIs down actually quite a bit. So listen, I want to I want to show you the changes to to the portfolio. But before I talk about the changes to the portfolio, which are very degen and very 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 important, let me know in the comments if you have made if you have made changes to your portfolio. And later on, let me know if you like the changes that I've made. In the interim, I want to just give you two things. One is you've got about forty-eight hours to get into Carl's free whale trading school. There's only forty-eight hours left. I highly recommend that you guys do it. As I said, I think Kyle is one of the smartest traders out there. He has made a school. The school is absolutely free. I'll show you in a second how to enter. Next move Just that watch takes this. place on Ethereum is going to be all the more bigger than what it was on Bitcoin. Here is Bitcoin. And on the right hand side, this is Ethereum. Now, as you would remember from the course, the volatility expansion is confirmed when the band moves across the 10th percentile mark. So this is the BBWP moving towards the upside over here. And here you have the moving average, which is also now crossing towards the upside. And ultimately that confirmed the expansion on Bitcoin and you had a massive $10,000 candle. Compare the number of blue bands on Bitcoin on the left hand side and now look at Ethereum on the right hand side with how many more blue bands there are. That means that volatility was even lower for a much longer period of time on Ethereum than it was on Bitcoin. Okay, so if you want to learn to trade like Kyle, the guy is a genius. You've got about 48 hours to get into his course. How do you get in? You click here. You then go to whale, whale School. There's a free, there's a link. Oh, let's go back here. There is a link here, which gets you into Whale Trading School. Join the elite community. You click on that link. It will take you to a chart over here. And you can get in. You've got seven, seven days until the main cohort starts. Two days to actually get signed up. Please do it. It's, the free, it's a free trading course. These courses are worth two or $3,000 um, anywhere else. And then look, I'm going to talk to you about something now that as soon as I do it, I know, I know Sheldon and Kyle will kill me, but who cares? So, can I do it or not? Um, you can. Are you sure I can do it? 
Okay. So here's how it works, right? Sheldon and Kyle have got Black Friday specials for their for their trading for their trading groups. So if you want to join Sheldon and Kyle's trading groups, they've both got 75% off uh, Black Friday specials, which are only supposed to start when? They're supposed to start on Friday. They're supposed to start on Friday. Okay, but I've just started them. So there's a link below. Don't tell them that I told you, but uh, they're going to come and throw stones at me. You can sign up with the Black Friday specials, get 75% off. Actually, what I think we'll do yes tomorrow is <clears throat> we will run, well, I'll show you all the Black Friday specials for all the crypto trading things that I think you need to get. So we can actually arm ourselves with that, with the Black Friday um, specials. So we'll do that. Um, someone says it's not free. Thomas, it very much is free. You don't have to touch. It doesn't cost you one cent. It's very, very, very much free. Um, all right, let's go into changes to our portfolios. Let's, let me know in the comments if you think it's a good idea to do Black Friday specials tomorrow. And we'll go through, like, I know TradingView have got 75% off. Uh, NordVPN have got a special. So let me know if you guys want to do that tomorrow. We'll do that. So let's get into changes to the portfolio. So this was the original portfolio that we made. Here it is. It's a fantastic portfolio. Even after this little dip, it's 67% up in, in the month of October. It's, it has a whole lot of narratives in it. It basically crosses the entire chasm of narratives. Uh, it, is, it, it has everything in it. I think it's a very, very, very good portfolio. And the market's telling us that it's a very good portfolio. It's given us 67% returns in the last month, which is not bad. Now, based on changes in the market, and what are the changes in the market? For one, we know that the market's now in a bull market. We're pretty, when we made this portfolio, we weren't that confident that the market's in a bull market. Now we know for sure the market's in a bull market, which means that we can be more degen, we can be more bullish. We don't have to hold back as much as we were holding back when we weren't 100% sure. We are getting increased confidence in the market cycle. As a result, we can afford to be more degen because we know that if we're right about our analysis, and I think we are right about our analysis, then we are somewhere here, somewhere in this section over here. Let me move it across so you can see it. So we are somewhere here and we've got this whole way to ride up, which means that we can afford to be a little bit more degen in our calls. We also know that we need to have more Cosmos in our, in our portfolios. We need to have more gaming in our portfolios. We need to have AI in our portfolios based on the events that we discussed on yesterday's show. We need to have more Solana ecosystem uh, uh, bets in our portfolio, we need to have more proof of work stuff in our portfolio, like Bitenza and like Casper, right? We need to have all those things in our portfolio. So based on that, what I did was I redid the portfolio and I called it the modified ETF. Now, before we go into the modified ETF, this original ETF still holds. This is a great portfolio. But if you want something, if you want something, uh, if you want something more degen, and we'll leave a link for this below. If you want something more degen, you are one of these people that wants to take a little bit more risk. I'm going to show you what you can do to make your portfolio a little bit more risky. And then I'm going to show you the one trick that only 1% of investors actually know. And when they do that, they land up making millions of dollars. So what have I done? The first thing is that I've moved Solana up a notch into our huddle portfolio. And I've basically said, look, if you want to be much more aggressive, put 20% of your portfolio into Solana, 20% into Bitcoin and 10% into ETH. Why? Because I just think that ETH is not going to be the star performer. I think it's a great piece of tech and I think it's always going to be used, but I don't think it's going to be the, the, the star performer of the cycle. So the first thing I've done is I've taken my allocation from 25, 15, 10 to 20, 10, 20. Cool. Then you know, we, we've kept the allocations to our layer ones. I've said a, a good layer one to go into is Kujira. Another good layer one to go into is Casper. And we keep it the same. Because we're not that bullish on ETH and the ETH layer twos, I've reduced our exposure to ETH and the ETH layer twos. And I've gone, so I said, look, let's get out of optimism. And you can choose to get out of optimism or you can choose to get out of Arbitrum and get into one of them or none of them. And, and potentially if you want to go really, really, really degen, Go into Tommy. Now, full disclosure, they are our sponsor, but they are launching a ZK EVM chain. They forked the ZK code and they will be launching a ZK EVM chain. So if you want to go really DGEN, you can go into Tommy. And again, full disclosure, they are our sponsor, but I'm not talking about them now because they're our sponsor. or our, uh, uh, Sorry, not our sponsor. They're more of our partner than they are our sponsor. Then we have, so I said, let's reduce our exposure to ETH 
and let's reduce our exposure to the ETH layer twos. Then let's go into Chainlink, which we, we were in already, but let's add Pith Network because we know that Pith Network is making incredible, incredible, incredible progress. Here it is, it's trading at a $3 billion, it's trading at 31 cents, which is a $3 billion fully diluted valuation. And so I think I wanna go quite big in the portfolio on Pith Network. Then, as I said yesterday, I wanna go big into the AI narrative. So I've got Render, I've got Tau, which is BitTensor, and I've got The Graph, which, which are, of course, our, our DGen narrative plays. Then I've got Arweave and Filecoin. Now, you can say that these are storage, but you can also say that these are decentralized AI because you need uh, a storage space for the AI narrative. So you've got 2% and 2% into both of those. Then we're going big into the DEXs and the trading, but we're not going big on the, on the Ethereum, old, established, high FDV valuations. We're going to go a little bit more DGENs. So here, what are the DGENs? One is I've taken the money out of Uniswap. I've taken the money out of Curve. I'm going all in on Rune. I'm waiting for the launch of Chainflip. Chainflip is a new launch, which is happening, I think, on Thursday, where it is a Rune-type competitor, which I think may do really well. So I'm leaving some space in my portfolio for Chainflip. Keeping Stargate, keeping Injective, waiting for the Jupiter airdrop, which is the DEX aggregator on Solana, to come in there. Then I'm going into Thor Swap, which is the exchange on Rune. It's called Thor Swap. I'm going into Thor Swap and I'm going into Radium, which is the exchange on Solana, okay? Then I'm waiting for the launch of Drift, which is a perpetual exchange on Solana. I've taken the money out of DYDX. And the reason why I've taken the money out of DYDX is I'm just said, look, it's already got a $3 billion fully diluted. I don't want to go into a fully diluted D uh, uh, um, I don't want to go into a $3 billion fully diluted uh, application. I'm keeping our exposure to Rollbit. I'm keeping our exposure to, to Gains Network. This, this should be actually under uh, um, Dexes. Let's actually move it because I have a friend, his name is Hen, and he says he's obsessive because he's, he's an accountant. He says, I always put things in the wrong category. So Hen, that move was for you, sir. Okay. Then I'm going much more into gaming and NFTs. I'm going into Immutable X. I'm going into Superverse or Superfarm which has had a huge pump today. I'm going into CDFI because I want to make sure that I can get into all the, the, the gaming launches. I'm going into Uncaged, which is the monkey ball token. I'm going into Nakamoto Games. So if you see, I've gone much more DGEN on games versus our first ETF, which was a little bit more conservative where we only had Immutable X and I think maybe one other. I've now said, look, let's, let's actually go all in on gaming. Then meme coins, Doge, and a small 1% of our portfolio into Bonk. And yeah, I'm making a list of all the things that are, like AOS is another one which I'm, which I'm looking at. Uh, Akash is probably another one that we should probably put here um, if you're looking to go uh, slightly more degen. So that is what the new portfolio looks like. Only into this portfolio if you are an absolute degen. It's much, much, much more degen than our last portfolio. So it's not the same, it's like a different risk profile. It's a much, much, much more degen uh, than our last portfolio. All right, now I want to share with you the big part of the show, which is I want to share with you why it is so one trick, which if you apply this trick and when you apply this trick, it will change your entire portfolio. And I want to show you how I learned this trick. Uh, it's a very, very, very important trick. And I want to show you how I learned it first, because I think when I tell you how I learned it, you guys will all relate. So how did I learn this trick? I always say that if you're bullish on an L1, what you should do is you should invest in the L1. And what you should then do is you should invest in the entire ecosystem of the L1. If you like Solana, you should invest in Solana. You should invest in the lending and borrowing in Solana. You should invest in the DEXs. You should invest in the games. Because generally, if for the L1 to work, you want all the experiments under the L1 to work. We know that. We've all done it. We all did it very successfully in the previous bull market. I'm going to remind you. So in the previous bull market, we all went into Avalanche. And we went and we bought all the tokens at Avalanche. I bought a token called Platypus, Pin Platypus Finance. You may remember it started somewhere over here. It went all the way here. And today, that token today in the next cycle is down a whole 99.87%. Yeah, you, you're seeing this correctly. I'll show, you, I'll show you 100 other examples. There was a token on the near platform called Ref Finance. We bought Ref Finance over there 
and the token is now down 99.41%. Okay, now I, I know you guys are watching this and going, oh my God, what is going on here? But I also know that you guys did exactly the same thing in the last cycle. We, all, we were all millionaires in the last cycle. We made huge amounts of money in the last cycle because we invested in the ecosystem around. We said, hey, we're bullish on Nier, buy Rare Finance. We're bullish on Avalanche, buy Platypus Finance. Then things like Luxray. We were bullish on, on the Luxray experiment. Luxray, even after this whole pump, is now a whole 99% down, 99% down. Axie Infinity, we rode it all the way up and we are still 96% down. See, we're still 96% down uh, uh, from the previous all-time highs. Now, in the chat, just let me know if this has happened to you, because I, I, I wonder if this has only happened to me where we've been so, 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 so excited about an ecosystem, and then we invest in the L1, and we invest in the narratives, and then we land up thinking that we're absolutely, absolutely rich, right? And then... At the end of the cycle, at the beginning of the next cycle, we're still 99% down our investment and we've lost all our profits. So has that happened to you? Yes or no? Just tell me the truth in the, in the chat. Just tell me the truth. I know it's happened to me. I showed you all the tokens that's happened to me. In fact, let me show you. This is my graveyard of all the tokens that I invested in and how far they're down. You can see, I know a lot of you are going to say, oh yeah, you invested in sunny markets. Yeah, I'm, I still hold my sunny tokens. I'm 99.96% down. Here's a beautiful spreadsheet of all the tokens that I invested in and held the ecosystem tokens from the beginning until the end. You can see that, right? 99, this one is, nine, Drip is 99.99% down. This one is 97, Splinterlands, 97.97% down. Wayu is down 99.94%. Okay, now I know this has happened to all of you guys, right? I know it's happened to everyone. So let me show you a little trick. And when you learn this little trick, it's going to change your portfolios forever. So the trick works on this premise. The... L1s will continue to grow. The fundamental tokens will continue to grow. But the narrative tokens are going to change every single cycle. The narratives that are hot in the one cycle are not going to be the narratives that are hot in the second cycle and are not going to be the narratives that are hot in the third cycle. Every cycle, we get a new bunch of tokens that become hot. And you know what happens to the old bunch of tokens? The old bunch of tokens die and fall into the graveyard. And no matter how many and how, or how much money you thought you were making or how good you thought the idea was, the most hype is going to be generated in the first cycle of the token's existence in 99% of the tokens. You got that? So the most hype that is going to be generated is going to be in the first cycle of a token's existence. And most of the tokens will never, ever, ever go back to that. And I'm going to show you what I said, most of the tokens. Some tokens are absolute garbage, Right. Some tokens that are not absolute garbage. I want to show you one which is not absolute garbage. It's Uniswap, okay? Uniswap is a fantastic, unbelievable product. But the narrative of Uniswap was much better in the old cycle and Uniswap went to 44 bucks. So even Uniswap at 44 bucks today, when the market's way more established, the market's only giving it a valuation of $5, which is 90% down. What does that show you? It shows you exactly this. It shows you that the layer ones and the fundamental tokens in the ecosystems will continue to go up. But the narratives will change every single cycle. The narratives will continue to change every single cycle. So here's the lesson. When you invest in a narrative, no matter how good you think the narrative is, if you think gaming on Solana is hot, that's amazing. If you think that decentralized uh, uh, DEXs are, are hot, on Solana, that's great. Invest and get the fuck out. Invest, make your money and get out of the token quickly. Because what we have seen is that even if these tokens work, they ain't going to make you rich. Like Uniswap. Uniswap actually worked. It's, it's a much better product today than it was on the 14th of June 2021. But the narrative isn't as hot anymore. Because the layer ones will continue to grow, you see? And the ecosystems, the, the narratives inside the ecosystems are going to change. One day it'll be DEXs, the next day it'll be gaming, the next one it'll be decentralized gambling. I don't care what the, the narratives are. Narratives are going to come and go every single cycle. The one thing that is going to continue to grow is the layer ones. 
So the first part of the lesson is when you invest in narratives, no matter how hot the narrative is, you get in and you get out. And if you get out too soon, great. And if you get out a little bit too late, great. Don't hold layer one narrative tokens until the next cycle because the narrative changes every single time. And there are very, 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 very few tokens that are anywhere near 50% of their all-time highs because the narrative has changed. And then in this cycle, you're going to get different narratives. The second part of the lesson is the, the part that's going to make the big difference to your portfolio. And it comes from this tweet that I did the other day. And in this tweet, I said, look, from now on, I'm taking 50% of my profits into USD and 50% into Solana until further notice. Now, if you read that tweet, it seems like a pretty basic tweet. But if you think about the logic of that tweet, it's exactly the logic of this thing over here. If I am convinced that something is a layer one and it will continue to grow no matter how many tokens are experimenting on it, take your profits and put it into layer one. Because then what happens is you're taking profits, but you're not actually selling out of the ecosystem, which means that you're taking profits on the risky stuff, but you're not selling out of the ecosystem. You're still enjoying the growth of the ecosystem. And on the layer ones, the growth will ultimately continue into the next cycle but not on the narratives. So the idea is to say, look, split your portfolio between the layer ones and the fundamental tokens in blockchain to the narratives. Trade in and out of the narratives and never, ever, ever hold a narrative from cycle to cycle because there has not been a, a, a time in history when narratives have repeated from cycle to cycle. Take those profits and put them into the layer one. That way, you're taking profits without actually selling out of the ecosystem. When you do that and you take your profits into these tokens, ultimately what lands up happening to your portfolio over time is this lands up happening to your portfolio over time. And only about 1% of investors are applying this thinking. And those are the investors that are going to be millionaires in this bull market. With that in mind, let's go look at our portfolio and say, when you're taking profits, when you're taking profits and you're gonna take profits on every single one of these tokens, believe it or not, where are you going to put those profits? You're going to put them into the layer ones that are narrative agnostic. What are the, the layer ones that are narrative agnostic? Bitcoin. Layer one, narrative agnostic. We're going to put profits into Bitcoin. We're going to put profits into ETH. We're, I'm putting a lot of profits into Solana. You can put profits into Kujira or Casper. What I wouldn't put profits into is probably pretty much everything else here. Because chances are that most of these are just narratives that you're actually playing. And in the next bull market, there's going to be a whole lot of different narratives. Stick to the layer ones. Put 50% of your profit into the layer ones. That way, when you sell, you're not actually exiting. When you sell, you continue to get the growth. You. You buy here. You sell here. You put the profits into here. Then you buy here. Sell here. Put the profits into here. Then you buy here. Sell here put the profits into here and your portfolio goes up exponentially. That way, again, I said, you're taking profits without actually selling out of the ecosystem. I promise you that that small change to your portfolio is going to make the biggest difference in the world because we are in the beginning of a multi, multi, multi-year bull market, which I think will take us into 20, 2030, as Kathy Wood says, and that asset class could be worth 15 times as much. But the tokens that are going to be worth 15 times as much are going to be the layer ones. And that's why you take your profits into USD and into layer ones, just like I said over here, where I said, I'm taking my profits 50% into, until further notice, 50% into Solana and 50% into USD. So listen, with that bit of wisdom, I'm going to love and leave you for today. Let me know if you enjoyed the show. Let me know if you're going to apply this new strategy. I will see you guys again tomorrow with another crazy, fun, alpha pack show. Hopefully I'll have more energy. So I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Until then, trade well, my friends.